Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Three Principles Global Community webinar. The Three Principles Global Community, or 3PGC, is a nonprofit organization that's committed to bringing an understanding of the three principles to people throughout the world. Today, we have John El Mokadem with us. John is a certified master transformative coach based outside of London, UK. His specialty is in creating breakthroughs with his clients by helping them to see a deeper understanding of the three principles in areas they may be feeling challenged by. He's part of the teaching faculty at, of Michael Neal's Supercoach Academy and has recently completed a 16-week piece of research studying the effects of sharing the three principles understanding with sufferers of chronic fatigue syndrome with some truly humbling results. John is honored to be asked to speak with the Three Principles Global Community once again this year. And if you're interested, you can learn more about John and contact him through his website, BreakthroughThat.com. And I will have that posted under the YouTube video. So John, thank you so much. Um, I was, as we were talking before um, I hit recording, John's going to do some one-on-one -on -one coaching today, which is pretty fun. Um, so I'll go ahead and turn it over to you. Wow, okay, great, thanks Bonnie. Um, hi everybody, um, it's nice to be asked back again to the 3PGC, I think it's over a, is it just about a year I think since I uh, addressed it before. Um, so it's, it's nice to be asked back. <laughs> um, so yeah, so as Bonnie said, I thought today would be a good chance to actually do something a bit different. And I'll be honest, Part of the reason why um, I was thinking of doing it this way was because the, the, the main thing that's kind of fresh for me at the moment is, is around the research that I've been doing with people with CFS. But as I was looking at what I did last time on the 3PGC webinar, I actually talked quite a lot about that on that webinar. So I thought, mm, I'm not sure I really want to do another one about that again. Um, and as I didn't have another idea that I thought, you know, hey, let's talk about this. I thought, well, let's, let's put it out there and, and, and use this as a chance to, you know, let you guys bring something to the table and let's do something more fluid and organic and, and see what comes from that. Um, having said that, I am going to just set the table a little bit, um, just so you've got a bit of context about me and, um, and, and you know, in the work that I do. Um, and I thought I'd say a little bit about this sort of idea of breakthrough coaching and what it is and, and what I actually mean by it and, and how that idea came about as well. And really, it starts about a year ago. Um, and I was, it was just prior to the last 3PGC conference. And I was in the process of rebranding my website and my business. And I was sitting with my wife, who's also my assistant, and... Uh, we were, we were sort of just brainstorming um, and, and sort of looking at, you know, we were asking that question that, you know, principles practitioners sometimes struggle to answer, which is, what is it I actually do again? <laughs> and trying to come up with a coherent answer that could be meaningful to people and, you know, and felt meaningful to me too. And, um, and we were looking at sort of the clients that I had at that time and the sort of results that people were getting. And there wasn't sort of an obvious kind of niche or, or niche, as the, as the US people would say, um, that, was, that was springing to mind. And there was people from kind of all kinds of backgrounds. And it wasn't obvious that there was a, a niche in terms of the people I worked with. But as we sort of explored a bit more, we realized that there was, there was some kind of pattern in terms of people showing up and seeing me and, and wanting to talk to me typically having some kind of challenge in their life. Um, and all I would do was, was pretty much just share what I could see was true about you know, their specific challenge in terms of what we could see from the, pre the principal's perspective. So we'd be looking at you know, what's true about creativity, what's true about how problems get solved, what's true about well-being, what's true about our emotions and, and what do they actually mean? And what, what I was finding was that sometimes I was working with people and, and pretty much after just one or two sessions of working with them in that way, people were getting some quite profound shifts. 
and seeing things from a very different perspective. Um, now, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to say that it always solved their problem, um, but what it did do was it actually helped them find the thing that was underneath their problem that they were really seeking. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is we've got this remarkable ability to dress up what we think we need to be okay, right? And we dress it up in all sorts of ways. So we say, oh, well, I'll be okay when I've got this job or when I've got my health in order or when I don't feel anxious anymore or you know, when my bank account's at a certain level. Well, actually, that's all an illusion, right? Being okay is innate. Being okay is built into us. And it's only a misunderstanding about what being okay looks like and, um, um, and how our mind works that stops us from seeing it more. So all I would do was pretty much share with people what I could see about those things. And you'd find people sinking back into seeing this space of okayness and well-being um, so much more and often after just one or two sessions. And then what I saw in my own life was that being in that space was not in opposition to doing better in life. It was actually the space in which we are innately built to perform. You know, when we've got, we've got a clear mind, this energy of mind is living through us and we're more able to see new solutions and creativity and problem solving. But it's also in that space, so the people I work with with chronic fatigue, when they're not so busy trying to find okay and trying to manage their life so much, well, actually, they're not stimulating their fight or flight responses so much in their body. And it creates a space for healing to occur very organically and very naturally. Um, so, so that's just a little bit, I suppose, about what it is that I see about breakthrough. But I'd really, I don't really want to rattle on too much about it, to be honest with you. I'd much rather sort of work with you guys a little bit and try and help some people so that you get a feel of what it would look like for you. Um, so I'm hoping the tech's going to work and Bonnie can help me <laughs> sort of make it work. And if, and if you've got something that you'd like some help with or you want some coaching on, you know, raise your hand, put a thing in the chat or, or do whatever Bonnie says we need to do. And then uh, let's get you on and, and, and see what we can do. Yeah, you can either raise your hand or if um, you can unmute yourself, please feel free to do that. You can unmute yourself by scrolling down into the lower left-hand corner of the screen. And this is the first time we've done this kind of, uh, you know, coaching thing online. So let's see if we can make it work. <laughs> What are some of the challenges that you guys have got? Is that somebody? I'm fairly new to the three principles. I have, you know, quite a bit of life experience around just the quote unquote search for meaning and knowing everything's okay and of course in miracle stuff. And I uh, left a 30 year career about, it'll be a year in October. Um, and I'm trying to find my own way as an artist. And that I knew was going to be fraught with all the thinking that I have going on. And so this unfolded for me, you know, like I said, about three months ago in my um, discomfort, I'm just, you know, sort of chanced across it with Jamie Smart's Clarity book. Mm. I've worked with a couple coaches and um, I think, you know, right now I'm listening to some of Amy Johnson's work. Yeah. Um, so... Is it just a matter of trust with all this? If you, you know, I step into the studio and um, I can, I, I've had breakthroughs, I've had some insight. Um, when I walk up to a canvas, I, you know, there's, there's loads of thinking, right? There's loads of what does this mean? What am I going to be able to sell this? Blah, blah, all this stuff that's like just crap and thought storms and stuff. Um, and being able to step back into that innate knowing and allow that to, is this how it wants to express through me, through my art? Does it want to express through me, through writing? Does it want, to, I don't know how it wants to express through me. And it's, I'm not certain that it is art. Um, 
I just know that I want to continue with it for this reason. I don't want to be running from it. You know, I don't want to feel like, well, that can't be it because too much crap comes up. You know, maybe it's the perfect thing because too much crap comes up. So um, anyway, so that's, I'd love to hear your opinion about that hmm. or your thoughts on that. So say a little bit more, if you don't mind. So if I was to ask you to sort of try and reframe what you said into a question, let's say. Oh, a question. <laughs> yeah. Just to, to make it a bit clearer for me, for me and you. So Michael Neal asked that, you know, it, what, did it, what do you want and what keeps you from that? And I was writing about that and you know, if I could imagine a perfect world, I could move out from my creative energy in whatever way that was wanting to express and just trust into that. I don't, and so, you know, there's like this big empty field of who knows what it is, right? Um, and who knows how you're going to move forward in that. I left the work I was in to f do this, you know, painting. It got me out the door. Mm. Um, but is it, is it the, what it, is it part of what I'm here to be doing in this moment or is it just there as something because I don't know what else there is to do? Um, mm -hmm. I don't have, when I work, let me see, when I move forward into learning about the three principles and that insight that comes with that, um, there's not a lot of resistance around that. I am just like, you know, I love that there's a community that knows this and shares it and their own trials and tribulations around it, their own thought stuff around it. Um, with the art, I'd love, if I'm going to stay with this art thing, I'd love to be able to somehow pull these together or move in whatever direction. So where's the question? I don't know. <laughs> um, well, I can say what I'm seeing a little bit and then okay. see if that helps crystallize things for you. So whenever i hear a kind of it's almost like a how to or, or do i need to kind of question as i'm hearing it and whenever i hear something like that usually there's a sense in which if if someone if someone's asking a how to it's usually how do i do this so that i can make it happen and then i can be okay right now, the bit to look at whenever there's a question like that, I'm not saying that how-tos are completely pointless, but what I'm saying is that it's really useful to look at what's our role in terms of navigating our life and how much do we really need to do it? Because whenever there's trust involved or that question of trust, it's like, you know, how much can I trust this to really just make sure that I'm okay and that it's not all going to go pear-shaped and go, you know, the wrong direction? Well, Part of the, the, the whole conversation, as I see it, around the principles is around seeing something about our inbuilt resilience, right, and, and who we are, right? So the more I've been, on this been in this conversation myself and been on this journey, the more I've just seen that actually it isn't my job to navigate my life and nor do I need to, because I'm actually always carrying around with me everything that I'm looking for. So my well-being is never lost. It just sometimes looks lost. Um, my resilience is never lost. It just sometimes looks lost when I get lost in thought and get lost in my mind. But that doesn't mean it is lost. It's kind of like if you've got the sky and then the clouds well, when it's a cloudy day, which actually it isn't today in the UK, it's actually blue out there. Um, when, when it's a cloudy day, it doesn't mean that the sky isn't there. It just means it's a cloudy day. And at some point that clears and we go home and come back to that space of just knowing we're okay. Now, the more I've seen that that is true, the more it's not occurring to me quite so much to want to figure out how or even needing to trust um life because i know that whatever happens to me that is in me i don't lose that i don't it's never gone um now what i also see about that is the more i can see that that's true 
the more I am, I don't know if you were on the call at the very beginning when Bonnie and I were talking about her moving house. And yeah, and she said, she said, oh, I went to Florida and, and I kind of just knew, right, this was where I was going to go. Well, what I see is that the more we can see that actually no matter what happens to us, we're never far away from that well-being and that, you know, knowing that we're okay. Well, the more we connect to this part of ourselves that just knows what to do moment to moment to moment. And that knowingness, as I see it, is what's connected to this deeper intelligence that we call mind in the principles community. It is the thing that is behind everything. It is the, the deeper intelligence behind life. And it's that intelligence that is moving us through life and bringing us insight and new thinking and knowingness. And that's the thing that actually, you know, helps move us through life at our best, as I see it. Now, if I compare and contrast that with, you know, how I used to try and navigate my life when I didn't know any of all, you know, any of all of this stuff, you know, it would typically be me going round and round in my head, getting really, really scared about life, thinking, what on earth am I going to do? Let me figure something out and let me try and make it happen. Right now, sometimes I'd create from that place, but honestly, I was not very good at creating from that place at all. That's why this was a real, um, this was a real eye opener for me because it made me see that actually my job isn't to create. There is something in life that does that. And the more I see that actually I, I'm never far from just knowing that I'm okay and seeing my well-being, wow, I just get better at navigating my life and kind of get surprised at the results that get created because they don't feel like they're my responsibility. They don't feel like I even did them half the time. And as an artist, I'm guessing you might have some of that experience where you know, you're not really thinking about it and then suddenly something gets created you go, oh, where did that come from? I don't know. I'm just guessing maybe that's the case. I'm not sure. Um, uh, I've, I've had a little bit of that experience, very minute amount of that, which, you know, gives me some sense of, okay, well, maybe this isn't just something I'm doing while I'm waiting for this innate wisdom to tell me what else to do. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, did anything come up as I, as I said what I said? Did, did that help you get more clarity around um, maybe what the question might be, if nothing else? It, it brought up um, this quote-unquote practicality of my mind wanting to say, well, yes, that is totally true. I get it in the moment. I am perfectly okay and don't need to know what comes next. Hmm. Um, and then my mind wants to start rolling into, okay, well, okay, so wh what do I do now? Right now I'm on a phone call. I'm on a Skype or uh, Zoom call, in a mm -hmm. webinar. This is it. We'll see what happens when this ends because I don't know. You know, will it be? I will, you know, I, it's just so that it's, there's such a, yeah. a sense of just this vast landscape of who knows in front of me. Um, without a whole lot of distraction. The only distraction I have going on is in my own head. I don't have any of the typical distractions people have. Mm -hmm. um, so this is why this teaching is so perfect for me right now and, and for anyone right now, right? So, um, mm -hmm. because I don't, you know, I know it's in my head. I know there's nothing out here causing any of my quote unquote problems. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm, I'm very open to learning and I realize I have a lot of resistant thinking. <laughs> so I, and I see the thinking and I'm starting to get behind it and be able to look at it and just not give it a whole lot of energy. Uh, but that there's a piece of it that wants the thought that wants to know, well, what does that mean? Am I going to paint or not? Or you know, what do you do with the rest of your day? <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. And I know you guys have all been there, right? So whatever wisdom you want to share on that piece would be awesome and or not whatever <laughs> I don't know yeah I mean look I I have thoughts like that that come in too and come into my mind it's like well what are you going to do now and you know and uh, and I'm not going to say sometimes I don't get caught up in those sometimes I do I just kind of know a lot more these days that 
you know, there's nothing in those thoughts whatsoever that's of value to me in terms of taking me to what ultimately I see that we're all looking for, right? And for me, ultimately, what we're all looking for is to just know we're okay. And that's, that okayness is the quiet before the noise. So the idea that I'm going to find the quiet by getting lost in the noise doesn't make so much sense to me anymore. Right. And, and that's something that, you know, has happened. I mean, me seeing that is something that's happened from understanding more about the nature of thought and seeing the only role that thought has in my life is to give me an experience moment to moment of what it is to be human. Um, and all of that is a valid experience and none of it is data or information that I need to take seriously about what I've got to do with my life. Um, what I'm going to do with my life is, and so I know there's some of the people on the call who know me have probably heard me say this analogy, but for me, my knowingness is as simple as me going to the toilet, right? I don't need to think about that. At some point I know to go and I go, you know, it's the same as, I don't know if you have this in your household, but one of the frustrating conversations that occurs in ours is what are you having for dinner? right? Every morning, my wife says to me, what do you want for dinner? And I go, I don't know. I've not even had breakfast yet. What do you want for dinner? And then she doesn't know either. And we bat to and from us and we try and figure out what we're having for dinner. And of course, we never figure it out. But I can tell you we've eaten dinner pretty much every day of my life, as far as I can tell. Right? So I'm seeing that, you know, I, I, I don't need to figure it out because there's something there that's figuring it out. In the same way, there's something that figured out where Bonnie was going to move to. Well, there's something that figures out what I have for my dinner. And thank God it's not my job because I'm bloody awful at it. <laughs> um, same with you. I can't guarantee that you're going to paint, right? But what I do know is that you are fundamentally okay, right? And, and, and one of the, the the, the things that I've seen about my own journey with this is, whereas before, I really, really, anything I didn't know the answer to, I really would want to try and figure it out. Nowadays, I'm much more comfortable if the answer, if I ask myself a question and I don't know the answer, I'm much more comfortable with that being a really valid answer. I don't know. Because that I don't know is not actually a weakness. That's the space of pure potential. That's the space where fresh thinking comes from. Um, it's, it, it's, it's the formless space that brings things into form, right? So if I don't know something, great, let's see what's going to come up. And the more I see that actually I don't have to look for my well being because it's built into me. Well, oh, okay, if I don't know the answer to something, I don't know, let's see. Um, it was really funny because I this call is a bit of an example of that for me. You know, last night I was sitting there going, God, I've not actually got a topic for this call other than a title that I came up with. Um, what are you going to talk about? And all I've had up until about half an hour before this call was nothing. It's like, I don't know. And then I was like, ah, well, let's talk a bit about breakthrough. What does that actually mean? And then let's see what you guys bring. So there's much more of an organic unfolding. And for me, it's something that's much more reactive and fresh to the present moment than it is anything you or I could make up in the noise of our minds. Um, again, anything sparked from that? Like just a sense of waiting and paying attention i mean i wouldn't i that's all that's coming to me is what my part is mm. you know oh i gotta pee okay there that was a <laughs> and then, you know that came and uh, and i'll go do that and, and whatever is supposed to happen next yeah I'll, no so you know okay it's very simple and um you know letting go of needing to have anything happen is part of it yeah, because nothing needs to happen for us to be okay. No. But that's, that's actually a, quite 
sometimes it's extremely simple, but it isn't what we're conditioned to think. And it's not what we're taught. You know, having just come back from the States, uh, you know, at the beginning of this week, I found it really difficult to turn the TV on because the TV is constantly saying, you need this, you need that, straighten your nose, fix your teeth, get a new car. You know, it's constantly feeding the illusion that there's a place you get to where you'll be okay. Well, that's, that's not true. We are innately built to be okay. We need nothing. Um, and the more we can see that that's actually true, okay, let's sit in that space of the unknown. And actually, it is a far more creative place because that is the place where we are at one with the thing that's actually running life, where this energy of mind can live through us and us be at our potential. Uh, that makes sense. Appreciate your bringing some clarity to my moment here. <laughs> oh, not at all. That's what this call's about. Thanks for raising your hand. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> not at all. <laughs> so, Bonnie, have we got any other hands up here, or? Wait, um, I got a question in the chat box from someone who doesn't want to talk, but it says, "Hi there. I'm fairly new to the principles, but I can see that it really is the way forward, and wondered what you suggest." when anxiety strikes, when I'm at work, always first thing every morning, and have trouble just letting the thoughts go as I'm trying to look calm in front of colleagues. Mm. So, okay. I'll, I'll share an example with you, um, and, I, and I hope it's gonna resonate. If not, and you don't wanna talk, then type and let me know what comes up for you and I'll try and react to it. Um, so I'll give you an example. I, um, I used to get extremely nervous when I had to deliver trainings. Um, very anxious, panicky, run to the bathroom kind of panic. Um, and that's how it used to be. And at the time, before I knew any of the stuff that we talk about on these calls or you know, within the community, at the time I used to do everything I could to manage that. Um, and I would, you know, use NLP, breathing techniques, visualizations, meditations, you name it, I, I tried it. And yeah, I would sort of manage to fake myself into this space of being okay. But I was a horrible trainer. <laughs> um, so I wasn't really present to the group that I was with. Um, and I was really busy in my head just trying to hold it together. Then a, a strange thing happened, and I, and I, was, on a, I was on a training event. I'd gone um, to, to see a teacher called Tony Robbins. I don't know if some of you know him, but he's like a personal development teacher. And um, I was just, I was at this event, and I was talking to some of the guys who were the, the teachers on that event, and just saying, you know, how are you doing? And every single one of these people told me that they were outstanding. And I kind of believe some of them, but there was one guy who told me he was outstanding and he was clearly really irritated about something. And I was sitting there going, why are you telling me you're outstanding when you're really obviously annoyed about something? And when I, when I saw this, it made me wonder about the usefulness of me trying to hold it together when I was doing a training. Because I was thinking, well, if I can easily tell when this guy is annoyed about something, even though he's telling me he's not, I can just pick up on it. Then I'm pretty certain that everybody else, when I go and do a training, is probably able to pick up that actually I'm an anxious wreck anyway. So what's the point of me even trying to hide it? So a strange thing happened. I went back to doing my next training and I thought, you know, what? I'm not even going to bother trying to hide this. It's like, it is what it is. And you know what? Because I wasn't caring so much anymore about the fact that I was anxious, actually, I didn't get panicky because I was no longer in resistance to the feeling. And that is what a panic attack is. It is me feeling anxious. It's me having anxious thoughts, then getting you know, a feeling of anxiousness. And then a panic attack is me going, I shouldn't feel that. 
right? So it's revving myself even more. So it's a resistance to a very natural part of being human. So what had happened with me was I'd stopped resisting it. And I found myself not half as much as anxious, uh, not half as anxious as I'd been on the previous occasion. Now, what turned out that day was because I wasn't resisting how I was feeling so much, I was actually a much better trainer because my mind was clearer and I was no longer resisting who I was and where I was. And actually there was so much more space for insight, as I said earlier, insight to come through me and creativity to come through me. In that moment, I was actually better at doing my job. So one of the things that I see, particularly at work, is that people make up that they have to be in a certain feeling to do well. Well, as far as I can see, that's not true. You know, you can't control your feelings. That's half the problem. Your feelings are the flip side of thought. And thought is this energy that runs through us and it goes up and down and left and right. You feel one thing one minute and another thing another. But if you try and resist that, that's you just making more noise on top of it. It actually makes it worse. Now, you don't need to do that to perform because performance is something that comes through us when we are not resisting how we actually are. Um, so for me, it's not that you need to necessarily do something about your anxiety. It's that you need to realize more about the nature of what it is and see that your feelings have got absolutely nothing to do with how well you can do at work. In fact, it is the attempts to try and do something with the feeling and change them and make them different that are likely to get in the way of you being at your best in that moment. That's the best I got based on what you've written so far, but if there's more you wanna write, please feel free to write it and I will do my best to respond. So have we got another, there's another hand up here by the looks of it, Bonnie. Uh, Ellen? Yes. Hello. Hello. Hi, Hi, Ellen. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. And this is fabulous. And for any future, any practitioners that are listening to this in the future, like more of these, more of these 3P events, I'm just getting so much value out of it. Oh, thank you. I'm glad it's helpful. Yeah, yeah it's so helpful. Um, so, I want to be in, I'm not sure what my question is. So I want to be, I want to let, I know there's one there, but I'm not sure what it is. And part, and part of it, I also want to kind of ground in something that's coming forward in your, that's come forward in your sharing. So um, some of the, uh, so I'm a 3P practitioner as well. And some of the people that I work with have uh, chronic illness or healing, on a path of healing cancer. And I, um, sometimes I don't feel secure in my, um, hmm. Yeah. So what I'm, what I'm, what I'm experiencing now, sometimes I don't feel secure in, in my, in my use of the three principles in that population because I have an old thinking or I, ha I have a, I have a strong foundation, but like, that they're um that they need to be oh, this is just witnessing what my my head is doing is just wild in this moment um <laughs> that's good <laughs> that it should be something you know that it that there, it should be something different than it is like that that the i was i was about to say that that they're like they're concerns or about their like that i'm not i'm not maybe it's that i'm not really um present to their illness that's what it is i'm i'm, I'm wondering like am i not really present to their illness if i'm directing them to their to their innate well-being and and the trillions of healthy cells that are are also present in their body mm -hmm. oh have we just lost her yeah I think we just got cut off, didn't we? Um, okay. Shall I, I? I've got an. Oh, I've lost you as well, Bonnie. Are you muted? <laughs> Hold on. Ellen just came back. Oh, is she back? Okay, great. Yeah. Yeah. Love the timing of that. That's all right. You're back. You're back. Okay. I'm great. Back. Um, 
Was there more you wanted to add before you got cut? No, off, let's or? just, I, I, think, I, think, I think mine had a very good cutoff point for me okay. there. All right, great. So here's what occurs to me. Um, you, you said that the patients you work with are cancer, uh, but, you know. Some, some, some of the clients that I work with, yeah. Right. So I, I don't have experience working with people with cancer, so I'm just going to flag that. Um, so I'm going to talk generally about what I've seen with, you know, chronic fatigue and, and the people that I have worked with, with, with health issues. Now, it seems to me that a major part of healing is the calming of the fight or flight response. I teach, yeah, I mean, the, I teach that to everyone and work with, yep. Yeah, it, yep. Is, it is a fundamental part of, you know, um, the sort of three pillars of functional medicine. Um, and, it, and it is the one that is often most inadequately addressed. Um, so a, a fundamental part of the work that I do with people with chronic fatigue is geared towards what it is that I can share with people that directs them towards seeing that no matter what happens to them, they are absolutely fine. And the more I can help people see that that is a truth about life and what stops them from, from being able to dwell in that more, the more it allows this fight or flight response to organically calm down. And that has a biological effect that is extremely positive towards people's health. You know, as you probably know, when the fight or flight response is active and active for a long period of time, you know, it impairs the immune system, it impairs digestion, you know, it, it, it actually breaks the body down. That's not what someone needs if they're suffering from cancer. You know, they want their immune system to kick in. They want to be, it. They want to be digesting their food. So for me, it's all well and good to treat the other aspects. But for me, the psychological and, and, the, and, and even spiritual, the realization of what we are and, and the seeing of our resilience is the foundational pillar of, of health. Now, I'm not going to say, I cannot go as far to say that it's a guarantee of you know, recovery or, um, or the elimination of disease. I don't have the proof of that. Um, but there are other practitioners who do these webinars, people like Bill Pettit, you know, they talk about epigenetics and how, you know, it only takes 30 minutes of being in the stress response to shift the body's expression from being one of health to one of disease. So again, I can see that if I was going to do anything to help somebody with their health, there are two reasons why I'd want to direct them to their innate well-being. The first is that I see there's very real science behind them potentially experiencing some improvements in their physical health as a result of it. But secondly, the realization of their innate well-being is actually the realization of their divinity. It's the realization of spiritual truth, which is ultimately the thing that even trumps getting better, is the realization that no matter what happens to me, I am already at one with that intelligence that is living life. So there's nowhere for me to get to. So even if this body falls apart, which let's face it, is the, it's the trajectory that we're all on anyway, even if that's going to happen, there's a, a freedom that comes from being able to see more of our spiritual nature and who we are. Um, does that help? Yeah, yeah, and I mean, I have evidence of, I have evidence of, of, the physical change. And, and I was working with someone yesterday in a, in a medical clinic. And at the end of our session, she had her vitals taken and the doctor came in and said, her vitals have never ever been as good as they are now. I hope she continues working with you. Yeah. I mean, I, so I, had, I, yeah. I had people on my study who, who came on for chronic fatigue and they had other, you know, diagnoses. I mean, um, there was yeah. a person with primary autoimmune. 
and they told me several weeks after um, you know they'd finished on the study that for the first time their autoimmune markers had improved um, it, and in one of the areas where they couldn't receive an infusion to improve it it had just improved organically yeah. um, so you know I think for, for me the more I have seen in my own life that this is a pillar of health it is a foundational part of that you know the the more it occurs to me to just go well absolutely that's the direction i take i mean it's the direction i take any client anyway but having had such an experience of of improvement of health as a result of seeing this myself there's just no other direction i'd want to go yeah uh, personally yeah i i'm i'm realizing in this moment that it was my thought that not, de not addressing or dealing with the illness piece felt like I wasn't being present to them or wasn't deeply listening to them. And I just see, I just see that it's just my own made up thought about that, that I'm really, what I'm really doing is pointing them to the, the truth of who they are, their, they, their divine nature by focusing on the other. So I wanna say that, and I also wanna say, I love the, you know, I'm just, I love that you mentioned Bill Pettit um, because I spent a lot of time listening to his videos and he's gonna be in my living room with 30 people tonight. Oh, wow, And cool. <laughs> And, um, and I that? will, huh? Tell him I said hi. I will, of course. I'm going to tell him I started my day with John and get to end my day with Bill and Linda. And, um, and, um, and, I'm, and I, I also will like, have another opportunity, to, many opportunities to, to look at the epigenetics of this and with him. So thank you for bringing that forward. Not at all. Bill's a really good person if you want to explore that, that particular aspect of it. And if it's something, you know. I, I, I already know. Yeah, and if you yeah, want to explore I, that separately with me, I'm happy if you want to just drop me a line, I can send you some oh, stuff. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, no, thank, no, you no. thank you everyone else for listening and I hope there was some value for others. Yeah, thanks for putting a hand up. <laughs> Not a problem for me. I'm I, a regular at that. I thank you. privately messaged you with follow-up questions um, for the, from the anxiety at work question and then I have another one um, that I'll send you so that you can okay. see it. So. Okay, so yeah. bear with me everyone, I'm just gonna have a quick look at this one. Uh, shall I, can I read this out loud? I guess so if I don't yes. say who it is, yes. right? I don't know who it is anyway, so. Um, as the two ladies in my office do know how I feel, so I'm not totally hiding it, but the anxiety takes over and I start to feel unreal, etc. What can I do at the peak of my panic to let it wash over me, please? Even before I get to work, I have terrible anxiety on the way there. I think it's a feeling of being trapped as I get it at meetings, even if I don't have to actively participate. I don't even like having to talk to someone in the town as I feel trapped talking to them. Yeah, I mean, I'll be honest with you. It's a little hard to sort of coach based on you know, these kind of, in the interaction in this way, but I'll, I'll just do the best that I can. I think the thing for me is that it's the realization that there's two things here. Anxiety is really normal. It's something that we all get. I had it a little bit even before I got on this call, right? I just don't care that I get it. It just doesn't bother me. Now, you might say, well, what is it that lets you not care about it? Well, it's a couple of things. It's, it's seeing that anxiety is not telling me about my life, right? It's just telling me where my mind has gone in that moment. That's all. And, and the nature of that is that it changes. It's transient. It ebbs and flows. It goes up and down. It's not a permanent thing. Um, and secondly, it, it's seeing that I don't need to do anything with that anxiety in order to be at my best. Now, you might say, well, okay, well, uh, but it really looks like it does because I've got to keep my job or something like that. I don't know. Maybe that might be how you'd reply to it, I'm guessing. Well, the thing is, it, there's something there to realize. 
So, for example, I had someone who I was working with the other day who was who was telling me about how anxious and panicky they get, um, and how they 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 keep going "what if" and you know trying to work out what might happen. And I was like, "Well, why are you doing that?" And they said, "Well, if I can work out what might happen, then I can hold it together, and then I can make sure that they don't judge me and etc. Cetera, etc." Cetera. And I'm like, "Well." The truth of it is that people are always going to judge you. Well, you know, it's just one of those things. You can't control for that. But the judgment says nothing about you. It tells you about where their mind is at that moment, but it says nothing about you. And again, with this situation here, you know, the truth of it is sometimes, even though we do our absolute best, it doesn't always work out the way that we want. Maybe you, you, you know, sometimes you can't always do your best at your work. But to realize that even if life doesn't go the way that you think it should, right, that resilience that you're looking for is not lost because it isn't coming from whether you do well at work or not, or whether you've got this job or that job. It's always there. You might have a moment where you don't experience it if, if life was to go in a way that you, you know, didn't want it to. But to know that, that that too is transient, that's just the mind catching up with what's happening in your life. Well, that's okay as well. Now, there's something about seeing, I'm guessing from what you've written here, that there's some fear that if you don't hold it together, something bad's going to happen. Well, it's that bit that you're making up about it being bad that needs to be looked at in the sense of seeing something fresh about, you know, if that bad thing happened could you be okay with that too? And what would enable that to happen? Because if you can see something about that, you're not gonna care so much about performing so well. You're not gonna care so much about whether you're anxious or not. And the irony is you probably will do better as a result of that. Now, again, that's a stab in the, in the dark based upon what you've written. I don't know if it makes any sense whatsoever, but uh, again, feel free to write if there's more to say. Um, Bonnie, did you say there was another, uh, another? Yes. Is it easier for you if I send it to you in a message so you can read it, or would you prefer to read it? Yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah, no problem. You should have it now. That was quick. Gosh. <laughs> um, okay, I'll read this. About a year ago, I developed this tendency to burp constantly, like really belching constantly all the time. I had every single med medical test in existence, but was given the all clear in stomach, throat, colon areas, etc. And doctors told me it's probably just linked to my anxiety and it will go when my anxiety goes. Since learning about the principles, I've found that my anxiety really is reducing, but I am still burping. I'm not really sure how much they're linked, but when I'm thinking about it, I definitely belch more. And when I forget about it, I'm not burping. So I think it's probably linked to my thinking. Since you mentioned your expertise in health anxiety, I'd ask if you had any advice about how to stop it. I hadn't burped or thought about it all afternoon, but now I'm typing this, I've started burping. Okay, interesting. Um, you, you know, here's, here's what I've got with this. And it kind of ties in with what I was talking with uh, about with the lady earlier. When our fight or flight responses and our nervous systems are stimulated, all kinds of weird and wonderful special effects get created. Um, and, you know, it, it's funny, like, uh, you know, you, you, I had a list when I was at my worst of just these crazy symptoms that I had the book thrown at me, you know, test for everything, and they all come back clear. Um, and, you know, those things have all kind of fallen away. And they've fallen away the more I've seen that actually it is the resistance to those things that causes me the problem, right? Because when you think about it, if you, if you have a symptom and then you, you really, really, really want it to go, well, that's a form of fight. It's a form of resistance. It's me actually stimulating the thing that is probably perpetuating it, right? So I suppose the direction I point you to is 
I wonder what it would be like, or I wonder w- w- what, what you could do to look in the direction of seeing that maybe it's o- just okay that you do that, right? Right now. I wonder what you could see around that. And the more you could see around the potential for being okay with that as a symptom, the less likely you are to resist when it comes up. And the more likely you are to allow and create a space for that fight or flight response in your body to settle down. And if indeed it is related to that, well, it'll probably go away. If not, well, your, your clarity will help bring you, that knowingness we've been talking about will help you know what the next step is to do with that. Um, but but if, if you notice there's a lot of anxiety about it and you really, really want it to go, that's the direction I'd point you in to begin with, especially in the absence of any medical sort of results that show there's a condition there. You know, what if this is just another one of those weird and wonderful special effects that gets created when our nervous systems are just overstimulated. Um, And what if in seeing that you could be okay with that, and that's again, that's just a conversation around the nature of well-being, the nature of, 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 of thought and how it creates our experience. The more you can see around that, the more likely you are to sink back into a place where it's just like, okay, I burp sometimes. Um, Again, it's a stab in the dark. I'm hoping that's helpful. <laughs> How are we doing on time, Bonnie? Are these one hour, these calls? Oh, I've lost you. Uh, sorry. Uh, generally, they're scheduled for an hour, but I can stay on longer if, if you can and other people still have questions. I have a, a follow-up response. Um, first, the last one said, thank you. That makes so much sense. And then okay. the workplace anxiety, I'm going to um, send this one over to you real quick. Okay. Uh, thanks. Yes, you've answered that well. I suppose it feels like my anxiety will escalate to an intolerable level where the men in white coats come and take me away. Any help with the trapped feelings, please? Um, I think what I'd say to you is just given the time, um, and if you don't want to sort of engage in a public forum, then write me direct and then I'll, I'll try and make it, it might make it a little bit easier. I hope that that's okay. Um, are there any other kind of questions knocking around? Anybody else want to bring something to the table or? There, there was someone who had their hand raised and then lowered it. I'm not sure if you still have a question or not if you do either message me or or put your hand back up and i can unmute you can i just say to the people who've been messaging me actually thanks for that it's given me a whole new experience of uh, of coaching in this way so <laughs> uh, okay here we go i'm gonna unmute and go on. Hear me? Hello. Hi. Hi. I can't figure out how to turn my video on, or I would. Uh, let me see. Oh, you, you, you have. Don't worry. You're all good. Oh, and your name's Camilla. We've been communicating, haven't we? Yes, we have. I Hello. have an appointment with you. Um, That's what I thought. I saw it appear in my diary. Nice to meet you. You too. You too. Um, I... I don't know exactly what I want to ask. Let me just share a little bit about where I'm at and you can speak to it. I was hesitant to keep my hand raised because I know our time is close. That's okay. I I can go over a little. It's fine. Um, So I'm fairly new to the principles. um, And I'll be really honest. Part of what drew me to them uh, was the possibility of... um, having a different experience of my body and my health. Mm. Um, But there's a bit of a catch 22 that goes on because, you know, the point is to look towards your well-being and to, to rest in that regardless of what's happening with your body. Right. Um, And yet there's this, uh, 
you know, for example, your story or the people that you work with, they engage with the principles and they get better. And so I'm, I'm a little bit um, stuck in that space. Mm -hmm. um, and it's interesting because I, I feel, I feel like I've settled down quite a bit. Like I've stopped efforting so much to try and figure everything out and fix it and solve it. And that feels really nice. I mean, it's, I'm very relieved to not be having to spend so much mental and physical energy trying to fix everything. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm kind of in a space now where I kind of feel depressed. <laughs> like, uh, I, I don't, I don't know that my mind uh, will ever settle down enough for me. Um, to really get some help. <laughs> you know, I feel like, okay, mind wants to help me with this, but I, I can't, um, I don't have a lot of trust that it's helping or that it will show up for me in this area. I have lots of great experiences with it in others, but in this particular area where I have a whole bunch of thought um, historically, and I, I, pay, I pay quite a bit less attention to it than I used to, but it's still the, it's still the place where it looks really solid to me. It doesn't, I can't, I believe that it could be made of thought. I'm open to that as much as I can be, but I, I don't see it yet. Mm -hmm. and, and it's fine that that's where you are. I mean, I, I remember um, when I, I, I remember having a conversation with Michael Neal, who was my coach when I did my apprenticeship. And I talked to him about health. And um, I remember him, it was kind of a bit of a throwaway comment at the time. And, uh, and I was talking to him about the challenge I had with heat, chronic fatigue and this sort of stuff. And, uh, and he said, well, have you considered that this is the role of thought in creating your experience? And my answer to him was, it, it, I swore at him. I'm not gonna say it on here, I'm not sure if I can get away with it on here, but I basically swore at him and told him where to go. <laughs> Because I was like, really? Is that, is that what you're saying to me? But, but I, I, I don't know. There was something that he said to me that day that just kind of made me go, hmm, I've had, had every test under the sun and apparently there's nothing wrong with me and yet I'm continually experiencing life as if something is wrong with me. I wonder. And it started me on a, on a sort of in a period of exploration where I was concurrently exploring the principles and also um, engaged with a, a functional medicine doctor. And I started to see the link between me living in stressful thinking and what effect it was having on my body. And there was something about that period where suddenly I was just saying, oh my God, the problem is not that there's something wrong with me. The problem is I'm continually trying to control something that it's not my business to control. And it is that, that very process of me resisting this intelligence that lives life. It is that that is literally breaking me down into the ground. Now, that was my process of seeing it. I'm not saying it's yours. All I can say is, is that if you keep looking towards this, you know, and you already are, so it's not like something extra I'm going to give you to do. You're already looking towards this. You're already looking in the direction of insight and seeing something fresh about it. Now, the annoying thing about insight is it's not particularly on demand. It's never really in our time scale. Um, and it comes when it comes. Um, and so the best you got right now is to is to not put any extra pressure on yourself to get an insight or get there. Because that's actually gonna take you away right now from just being okay with yourself as you are right now. It's gonna make a whole new level of suffering for you. Because you're gonna be going, oh, I'm in pain and I shouldn't be in pain and I should be having an insight and I should be getting better and I'm not. Well, that's a really good recipe for torturing yourself, <laughs> right? Um, I, I don't know if that is anything resonate in what I said there. 
Yeah, very much. I totally get it. I can see that. I can see that in my experience. Yeah. Um, and I, I do get caught up in that, you know, like I should have figured this out by now. I should be able to see that it's made of thought. I should be able to, I should, should, should. And but that's, it's not a helpful direction. It hurts. It hurts and it creates more suffering. And I think that's why, you know, it seems to me there's often two levels that this conversation around the principles occurs at. And I'm aware that's slightly artificial, so hold it lightly. But the sort of level one is, you know, thought creates feeling, right? And people just kind of talk about the thought feeling connection as if it's almost a subtle prescription that, you know, oh, okay, so my thoughts create my feelings. So I just need to realize that my thoughts create my feelings and then my feelings get better. Well, I don't think that's what it was all about. For me, it's like I've got lots of examples of where I have woken up to that link and dropped out of thought. And I have lots of examples where that is not the way it happens at all. And even though I've got a lot of thinking, I still am really in it. So for me, it's about looking deeper to what for me is the essence of this conversation, which is unashamedly spiritual. It's around looking to see you know, what is the game that's really being played. Well, as I see it, the game that's being played is, as one of my teachers called it, it's one playing the game of two. It is, you know, this formless intelligence that is coming into form and playing with itself in infinite possibility and infinite potential. This is the way it's choosing to do it through you right now. This is the way it's choosing to do it through me and it ebbs and flows, but it's the realization that we aren't something separate from that, right? That's what we actually are. That's what everything is. And, and the thing that makes us want to continually better our human experience, as I see it, is that we lose sight of that spiritual truth. We lose sight of our nature, and that makes us want to try and perfect our humanness as, as, as kind of the, you know, the second best prize, if you like. Um, it's like, oh, well, you know, okay, I'll, at least I'll make my life look shiny and pretty. Well, the problem with that is you're not really flying the plane. So there's a need to go deeper and see that, that part of ourselves that is absolutely untouchable because it puts into perspective the pain that we will inevitably experience as part of what it is to ride around in the human experience. Um, is that helpful? Yeah, interestingly enough, um, I'm a cancer survivor. Okay, um, right. And uh, I, it was most easy for me to connect with that, what you're pointing to, mm. when I was in, in the thick of it. Yeah. I mean, it just, you know, I just kind of cracked. And it all came to the surface and and that gift was there it was easy for me to see what you're talking about yeah. and, and to feel it and it's kind of now down the road when i'm dealing with with this part of that of that experience that it's it's getting more tricky for me mm. so it's the direction to keep looking towards yeah um, i can see that thank yeah. you no you're welcome i look forward to chatting with you yeah. uh, when we do <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Take care. See you soon. You too. So um, I guess we're, I don't see another, any other hands up there, Bonnie. Are we, uh, are we in a good place? I don't see anyone else either. So um, yeah, we can wrap it up now. John, not only was this helpful and insightful, but really fun. Um, <laughs> have this interactive um, session going on. It's much more interactive than any of the webinars that I've facilitated before so thank you so much oh not at all it was a little bit kind of seat of the pants but um sometimes it's more fun that way so Excellent. thanks for you know, being willing to play with it <laughs> yeah and um just to remind everybody the next webinar is on september 14th and it will be with george and linda pramsky at the same time so <laughs> that should be a really good one as well so yeah, see, definitely one worth listening yeah. to Definitely. So thanks so much. And uh, let's see, I'll unmute.
all say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Thank, Bye. You. Thank you. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for being Thank here. You.